It was quite funny speaking to Carl actually just before he went out in the arena. He, uh, he quoted what he'd call Carl syndrome, which was essentially that if he can find that, then there's no reason he couldn't peg Declan back. I think Declan was good yesterday, but I don't think he was at his absolute best in this match. So we'll wait and see. Oh, not the best of opening breaks for Declan. They did not explode at all. Frustration. And I guess the target, you say, Declan still needs five, so Carl can afford to lose four. So ten four is the mark. And if these two were playing a, a race to ten, and this was zero zero, ten four, whilst ten four either side is a big scoreline, but because of the quality of the players, it's not unheard of simply because you get to see players, once they get ahead, they can get on a roll, and if they get the chances, they can just pull away. So it, it's not absolutely outrageous to think that any of the players that are a 9-4 down can turn it around but they do need to pretty much take everything that comes their way so yeah I mean obviously Carl was well he was 7-3 up in that final wasn't he against Ronan McCarthy in the world final obviously 4 difference not 5 but actually it was a shorter race so when you're translating that over it's definitely more than doable for someone of Carl's ability it's just advantage opportunities like this he needs to come and take early this is exactly the opportunity he would have wanted in the first frame on his opponent's break on Declan's break as well I know Carl said he was struggling with his own break getting chances but you've got to believe it's going to work so if you can if you can deal with your side of the table and and then take away what one out of every two from your opponent you're going to pull it back well, as I say, target this mini session as 3 1. <laughs> Get back to 10 7. And then if you can take the first one and the next one 10 8, you're right back in the match. So all these little mini targets will be in Carl's mind at the moment. Won't set the bar too high. You won't be looking at winning at the moment. But just taking it like mini session by mini session is a good way to compartmentalise everything that you're doing. Just the start he needed. And finding his break like that, I don't feel like much is going to go wrong. I still feel Declan Brennan looks better when he's front ball breaking. I understand why he's changed to the cut break. He's had a couple of little spells with it on the TV table this weekend. I just think he looks a better player when he's front ball breaking his chances just look big and he's still going to take these out it's going to be another he's another break clearance from a cut break I just think it, it's a he looks super dangerous when he's you feel like it, it's relentless yeah I mean in this frame he's done all the hard work with the first shot he's bumped that red out of the way sat out on the bottom cushion and he's opened up all the yellows in the centre of the table this is for deck this should be bread and butter obviously not trying to jinx him or anything like that but don't think I've ever really seen deck miss an opportunity like this it's a, a Rona McCarthy finish this we're not going to see the cue ball do any movement whatsoever. His good friend Ronan, who essentially, I don't want to say taught him the game, <laughs> showed him the game, as in he, he kept beating him. I, I, I was going to say that would definitely fuel Ronan over deck if yeah. you'd said that he taught him. It was more a case of showing him, <laughs> and now it's the other way. Well, it's the other way around, I think, in their practice sessions, but of course Ronan's certainly still winning the titles. But he's built a career on economy of movement. And just these sort of finishes where it's just stop, 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 stop. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'd, I'd love you to ask Deck that in the interview. <laughs> How do you feel that Ronan coaching you since day one? I know you like him front ball breaking, but he is crunching that cut break at the moment. That's the best one he's hit. That was there was more in that one than previous. I 
I like reds. It's just a question. Does the one on the eight spot, does that pass into the bottom left? I think, I think if that does, I think it's a great opportunity. Where is he? Which way is he going here? He's just going to spin out. Opportunity with that angle. He could have done some moving. It wasn't a great angle, but he could have done it if he needed to. So does that tell us that that red does go? The left-hand one, definitely. The one in the middle is the question mark. I mean, if he's high on it, maybe just a couple of centimetres right of where he is with the white now, you could potentially play the red and push the yellow through. just opens up the red a bit more with the insurance that you're on the red to the middle pocket later on. You might even have the angle to do it now, which is why he's looking at it. It then just means that he's working on less finite margins, but... i to change part. The red he's on to top left does go. I can only assume that's to do with trying to get where he wants to to play the breakout. Maybe slightly worried about he couldn't get anywhere playing the, the red to top left, so he has to come down the table. Good pot. Yeah. He wants a particular angle, that's why he's really trying to hunt at this because he's straight, I think it does go. Or he's gone near straight. Oh, it goes comfortably. Oh, yeah, flies. Oh, just marginal detail on that one. Just one of those that you just quit on a fraction, worried about overhitting it and going behind the yellow. He's got to be careful here not to knock the eight in. It looks like he is. It looks like he's going to make both here. Oh, that's good. That's very good. Oh, well. He potted it thin. <laughs> I thought it was going to drop. He potted it thin. <laughs> he knew what he was doing. He's had a bit of a smile to himself. Yeah, could finish that in the end, but... Yeah, I th he had a bit of a smile because I don't think he, was fi he thought that was dropping, but... If he yes. makes it centre pocket, he pots the eight ball. So... You know if you're missing an opportunity, you're going home. You've probably not really got big aspirations at the moment of still winning the match, so... Why not just try and go for it, and if... You do end up missing, obviously deck wraps up the match a bit quicker, but... If not, you can really get yourself into a rhythm. Extension called. Worst split. I think I slightly prefer the the yellows. I think he's got a nice angle on the top yellow of the two into the top left. He's disagreed with me though. I've gone reds. Neither was that bad an option. He's wanted to land a bit closer to the cushion there. I think he was trying to give himself an angle to go into the red and yellow. On the left, could still get there. But had to force it a bit more, and because of that, he's sat on the red. And he's nowhere, really. Maybe a shot off the cushion for the red in the middle. Yeah, not nothing doing. Might have just made decks work a little bit harder, though, just knocking that yellow to the right-hand side. But this is going to be the first opportunity for Declan to get this match wrapped up. Extension cold.
can avoid the yellow that's above. Yeah, he's looking at it now. Can he come off the top cushion and open up the yellow on the right hand side? He's going for it. Is he on anything? I think he might have been a On the overhead, it looks close for the yellow to the top left. He's not even looked at it. I think I actually think he might be on all three. <laughs> he was close to not being on any of them. Yeah, it would have been astounding if he wasn't on any of them. But, but he is fine. Just pulled up in time, this yellow. I think he can just hold this, this white give himself a decent angle to come across for the eight ball. Well, maybe not. So, a couple of cushions required. Quite clever, that. He's He could have come down and taken it top right corner, but wasn't guaranteed to get the angle. But by coming past the straight here, he knows he's got the three cushion line, and it's just natural. He's not hit this, but he's just got there. This eight ball for Declan Brennan to wrap up a 14 7 win over Carl Sutton. Ooh, just <laughs> but it falls. Declan Brennan, first man into the semi finals. The Champions League champion is eyeing up the Masters. Very much a, a hard fought 7 6 scoreline from the opening session of this one. The closest of all four of our four quarter finals. 60 minutes on the match clock. Chris Day needs eight. Sean Chipperfield needs seven. Chris Day has the first opportunity. Very fortunate to keep Q1 on the table, actually, but he won't care about that. He has a chance. The, the power he's generating through the break at the moment is leagues above the original Chris Day break that he had a little while ago. Um, that kind of stand-up action, the way that he then fires through the ball and throws his body at it in all fairness as I think seeing him gain more results I think it gains him more opportunities in most matches I think yesterday actually was a good example of that where Sean played pretty well in the first session and despite Chris making the quicker start obviously Sean went on his run midway through but that break just gave him that opportunity when he needed to just to steady the ship and because of that, he got back with him one. Whereas previously, I think, based on the generation of his options, he maybe wouldn't have got that before. Easy for you to say, Luke. <laughs> yeah, just lost the ability to speak there for a sec, but... That's because you've got a mountain of uh, sandwiches and, and uh, food in front of you. You're not meant to tell that to the stream, <laughs> are you? A little peek into the commentary box here. Straight. Yeah, I think he is. I think it would have been better to have been just an extra turn. But he's not not really a problem, but it's not a great last ball for the eight ball either. He needs to move the cue ball across the table for the eight. Oh, well. His last two shots weren't the best. He's still in with a chance, but it's all of a sudden tricky. It's quite a thin cut in the middle. You don't want to be close to the cushion with it because it's hard to make sure. You normally drop these in dead weight, but he's got to get across as well. So the factors on this shot are a little bit higher than they initially seem. And that is why he's not landed on the eight ball. Done all the hard work in the first three shots. From there, he's got to get out. And quite poor not to... Yeah, I mean, 
where do you put this eight ball? I don't think it's a good double. I don't think he can cut it. See where he's going now. I think he is looking at a double. This is tough. Well, that's great. Every, I'd probably say five or six frames, it's got to be said. He's not doing anything majorly wrong, but. Great from Sean. Always like catching when he parks it like this. Yeah, he went back to that hand on the table break as well, didn't he? He's kind that's of. It's a control break. When he goes hand on the table, he's going control. It always looks good when he's breaking that way. Still spinning. He was really trying to force that into the yellow and red, which is surprising. Missed his target by quite a distance as well. Yeah. Got so many yellows around. I'm very surprised he went for it so early. I mean, he could potentially screw into it here if you're feeling a little bit outlandish. You've got the yellow over the bottom left. There you go, and then he just didn't generate the spin on that one. Has he been fortunate? I think he has. I think he's got a bit of angle here to go into it. This is not what he's been playing for. He wouldn't play that close to the yellow. That's not great. Not got a good angle here, and I think it's too close to the cushion for a double. Oh, maybe he feels. I mean, one thing that Sean is good at doing is getting absolutely rakes of side on the cue ball. So I wonder if you can just pot the one over the pocket and hold it enough to leave himself a shot at the one down the rail. That's pretty good from where he was. Yeah, right, right. Tough pot though. Hampered over the black. And there you go. And now that's kind of one <coughs> One mini mistake each. I think Chris Days was more than a mini mistake, in all honesty, but this was a finish from Sean that was just always struggling, always chasing, always felt like it was going to get away from him. Chris has got a punish here, though, by winning this frame. Yeah, can't afford to fall 10 7 down. Give your opponent that confidence, especially coming in just one behind. Slipped past it, hasn't achieved it. Has still got this down the rail. I think he can just almost drop this in, which if he can do that, I'd fancy him to pot it. Okay, you leave a slightly tougher next red. But more than well within the Chris Day territory. Is he going middle here? That was tough. That was really, really tough. I think if you're there, I think you've got to back yourself to pot that down the rail. I know, once again, it wasn't easy. But... I would have backed him to make the couple of pots there to get out. And Sean's just going to eat up that mistake. You know, if he can, if he can do what he did in the last two and try and take out two two in a row again, obviously he needs a favour from Sean in that. But you know, even if Sean gets thirteen eleven, for example, Chris can win three now. Chris Chris can take three frames in a row. There's, he's got no problem with that. But it's just he's for now he's got to keep himself within range and hope that the closer that Sean gets to that finish line, 
there's just going to be something that gets in the way for him. And he needs to keep generating chances like this off his break as well. That was a good first shot. Getting there was key. He was a touch straight. So he's kind of really forced a nice angle without really having to overhit it. Now he can just pick these off. This is just about the last shot on this visit that can go wrong. Yeah, he does just want to hold the white where the yellow is. He doesn't want to run too high. So just stunning it makes the pot slightly missable. acceleration but it's going to be okay. It's still okay. I think he can just kill this in. Oh, he is digging, so... Slightly overcooked that. Should be okay. Yeah, this is. After, after that early mistake from Chris, the standard's really gone up a level. Took a bit off that, I think, but does make a ball. Makes a couple. Tricky first shot if he wants reds or yellows. I think, I think yellows might be the ball. I think if he goes for the one down the rail, I think he can either come low or high. I think reds are a better layout. But if you've got the opening pot, see, this is tough. He has played it well, though. from here you'd back him to get out but this is the quarterfinals of the Masters extension extension call It actually does make a difference if the reddies oh, actually it's absolutely fine. One roll further than he would have liked. Agreed. He was playing top left as his last ball. I still think he'll he'll do that. Yeah, just settle at a bit more distance, but you never like it, do you, in a frame to win a match where things are slightly harder than they needed to be. He's pretty straight on it. And it's going to be this eight ball for Big result for Sean Chipperfield. This has been a big test today against Chris Day. In it goes, though. Great match. Really was a great match. So much going on out there. Twists and turns. High quality as well, as you expect. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Jordan Shepherd is way behind in this match at the moment against Craig Waddingham. 9-4 down. He's got a mountain to climb. Dry break is not the ideal start for the man from Wales. 
it was an intriguing game yesterday, wasn't it, Si? Jordan got off to a fairly quick start, it's got to be said, but Craig Waddingham just came through and all of a sudden just started dishing off the lampshades. Probably the highest quality of the, the four quarterfinals from session one. Just about every frame was a clearance from the break. It was very high quality. <laughs> Biggest story, really, more than anything else, was just Craig's break was working and Jordan's wasn't. Jordan was getting very frustrated, had some had some words with our referee Rich Rhodes at the end. He wasn't happy with the, the racks, but they kept getting cleared up. The splits were still good. He just felt they weren't exploding as he wanted them to. These certainly did. These exploded, no question about this rack. And Unfortunately, it's still dry for Jordan. Yeah, the only catch is there. I think Craig went to try and promote the red. It's close to the yellow in the top left, and he hasn't got there. Didn't get enough side on the ball. Due to that, it's now really tough to get into it. I think he's maybe trying to screw into it here. This is it's not a big window. There you go. Catches the wrong yellow first. And now really hides it. Don't recall, don't recall Craig having an opportunity in the first session and not getting out. And that's what's going to happen here. Oh, he still went for it. I think because the yellow and the red's planted, he maybe saw that as an opportunity to send the white into it. Probably knew that the pace he was going into it, he wasn't going to open them up for Jordan either. So a bit of clever thinking in there. But... Jordan is now going to get a bit of a hold on this frame. Probably going to play the loss of turn and promote the white to the bottom end of the table, like so. And that all of a sudden closes the door, really, for Craig Waddingham. There's not a lot he can do with the reds here. Jordan's reaction tells me he thinks there's a shot on. He groaned as he turned away from the table. I mean, the only thing that I can see is that should Craig get there, there is a big pocket with the red in the top left that could promote it as well. But there's no ball to really get there. I don't know if... You can maybe... Yeah, can he cut this in the middle and maybe come off the side cushion to get there? Oh, he did have the gap. It wasn't far away. Yeah, it was a good effort. I didn't think he had that angle on, but since he did, all of a sudden the pressure reverts back to Jordan because it's not real, no real hiding place, I think. That's a clever shot. Putting the yellow in the middle and then knocking that red to put it safe. Just offers him a bit more control. But he hasn't put any of his balls safe at the same time. That's the that's the good catch. And then he plays another loss of turn. But Smart stuff out there from Jordan. Yeah, he's picked this apart in a way that it's not easy for Craig to respond. Craig gets the loss of turn back. But has probably accepted at this point if he's going to get a chance he's going to have a pretty awkward angle to try and promote a red he's just looking to see if he just pops this yellow on then what's he leaving on the red so if he doesn't quite get the snooker which he hasn't is he leaving anything I don't think there is I think if Craig was to pot this red that's in open play the one that's tied up you can maybe get the pocket cover with but not really beneficial to him I wonder if Jordan will just have a bit of a free hit at another loss of turn I don't know he potentially fancy that I don't think he's going to want to go from here just because the Cluster of three at the top. Only the one closest to the pocket goes, and it's not really an, an advantageous angle. Uh, 
Mass. Oh, no. Can get safe here, but I just never really felt like the shot for me. Well, I'll tell you what, he's had a result there. Did he play it? Oh, no, he didn't. Yeah, no. I was going for a moment then, the way that he was looking, I thought he, was, he tried to lang angle no. it to get a snooker, but. Yeah, no. If, yeah. Played, if, if he'd played that, then yeah. He is good. <laughs> he is good. He's just not that good. I was waiting because uh, uh, Jordan is one of those players that will raise his hand and just acknowledge it. And waiting to see whether that would happen, and it absolutely did. I was going to say, it just, oh, has he fluked it? Oh, well, white ball. But, yeah, no, just, just the way it took so long for the hand to come up, you almost questioned. He was like, he hasn't played that, has he? But this is the opportunity that Jordan needs. Similar to the Carl Sutton Declan Brennan match, it, he needs to take this out and then he needs to gain the momentum from it as well. Not just win this one and be happy with it, he needs to reel off a couple. So, bit of a loose one, but should be absolutely fine. And they say ball for 9 5. Very much the start that Jordan Shepard needed, not the way he would have wanted to do it. Needs a ball. Doesn't get one. It's tricky again though. This feels like the last chance that Jordan had off the Craig Waddingham break. This one's not as bad, I don't think, for the reason of the problem red at the bottom. He's got one to the bottom right you can use to promote it and then afterwards all the reds do go I was thinking I was thinking yellows I was thinking if you play the breakout on the yellow top right you could then you then got complete control of the frame in fact he'd gone for the breakout there that's a great yeah. shot but Jordan saw it the same way as you that the red top right isn't the problem it was only the one at the bottom and he could get there straight away and this is now a much better layout yeah, because you can remove the one to the top right and then use the other three to land on the eight ball. You've got that big pocket with the yellow once that red's removed. Yeah, I just wasn't seeing it in one visit. I was seeing, seeing how do you take control of the frame. I don't know, George, Jordan was a little bit too wide on it. I'm a little surprised he didn't just hold and get rid of that red at the bottom at the same time, unless he's going to come back for it. Roll short. I think he was maybe playing for the one closest to the rail. Yeah. So this just has got a little bit harder. He's had to bounce. I think he's just okay. shot because he can either play twice across yeah, I think twice across is the way there he's just a little thin on it to do take another route but that's perfect oh well is it though never had the cue ball has he since he played the, the second shot of this visit he's just always been clinging on with the cue ball finally comes back to bite him once again it comes back to leaving this red at the bottom I didn't feel like he needed to. I'm with you. I don't think he needed to. But I think he always planned to in terms of if he gets the cue ball. That was once again. Oh, well, a little flick off the eight. It goes in without the flick off the eight. He's played it as a big pocket. That's special. That really oh, is. Well. That's a touch of fortune as well. Can't, uh, can't say it wasn't. If it hits the eight ball any thicker, it doesn't go in. If it misses the eight ball, it goes in. Yeah, there you go. That's oh. Wow.
Craig going dry again. His brake's not turned up today. He hasn't made a ball yet. That's quite big. Yeah, this is definitely the best layout he's had off his brake as well. Now after missing the last opportunity, Jordan needs to now take this one and just regain that Double. momentum. Can't afford to kind of enter a lull now because if you do, the match is going to get away from you. It's all going to be hinged on this yellow to the top left, he's just overrun that one but you can tell for five and a half frames he has not quite got the touch or feel out there today like he had yesterday he's not guaranteed to get on this yellow at the top of the table that's the problem, if that pulls up short and he gets on the left hand one of the two together it's not difficult at all If it wasn't for the yellow at the top of the table, he could have dropped that in and then he could have dealt with the other two, but he wasn't going to be able to leave the angle to get up there. That's why he's working so hard here. Oh, he's missed the yellow as well. Slam on the table. It's tough out there, isn't it, when you're a long way behind and you're just trying to wrestle that momentum back and every time you do just something seems to happen that goes wrong huge frustration from Jordan Shepard and you saw the referee Arich Tesgal having to do over and have a quiet word in his ear just a, a, like a mini warning if you like we love to see it show your frustration <laughs> in that situation I feel for Arich he's got to walk, he's got to walk over to a, a player that's just raging with anger and tell him that he's going to get He's going to get a warning for that. Yeah, he's almost got to play the role of the school teacher a little bit, hasn't he? Just go around, tell, tell off the student kind of thing. And You never don't come out looking like the bad guy if you're a referee, do you? That's, that's the problem. But, yeah, this is a golden chance for Craig now. He's not really had to do a lot in this session so far it's got to be said he's just kind of fed off of Jordan's mistakes Jordan's had all the chances it's going to be three 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 in terms of total frames and Jordan's had a chance in all six yeah you can see it with Jordan he's kind of back into the zone he was yesterday where he's a frustrated figure knows that the game is getting away from him here worse than yesterday though knows he's had an opportunity to do something about it yesterday he didn't and the frustration was just not being able to get a chance off the break thing is is that actually I mean despite the fact he did still miss a couple of chances he did take that first mini session 3-1 and he was back at 10-7 so he's made indents into that comeback can he get a ball off his break yeah he can first time today and he's been left not a lot. Tricky opening yellow. Yellows aren't bad if he makes the tricky opener. Can he see the trick? I'm assuming he can put the one to bottom right. I think he's touching ball on the red, so I, I don't do know if too. he can. I don't think he's on anything. Because he's looking up the table now. I'll tell you what, this will be music to Jordan Shepard's ears, because... I mean, you imagine if he doesn't get out here and Jordan breaks the next one, 13-11, all of a sudden, he's game on again. Oh, he can pull the red. So it's actually not too bad. Red by the eight ball, major problem. I think it 
might have been trying to leave himself an angle here, yeah. Red into the top right and potentially just to knock the the red on. Did she even pot it? Well, it just bounces off the cushion enough. That was the only way that could go wrong is if the red had decided to sit on the cushion. Always talk about Craig Wanningham's a player that backs his potting. He's going to have to do that here. Not this one, but the next one. The benefit to this is that he's only got to drop it in. Essentially match ball. He won't make the mistake. If this red goes in, it'll be simple and natural from there. Yeah, brilliant. Didn't touch the sides, did it? And it's fair to say that the first session kind of broke the camel's back and then in the second, Craig's just done what he needed to do. Two very session, different sessions of Paul, ultimately. All going Craig Waddingham's way. And he is into the semi-finals of the Masters. Knocks out the Welsh Wizard. And he puts his place with a matchup against either Chris Manning or Jack Whelan in the semi-finals. Here we go then. Final quarter-final of the 2024 Masters. Chris Melling holds a 9-4 advantage. It's not 0-0 as it says on the scoreboard there. It is 9-4. A really intriguing matchup yesterday, actually, because it, I, I had a very brief conversation with Chris Melling as, as I left the building last night and said to him it, it, it felt strange because it felt like it w you weren't really on it, it, you weren't really playing your best stuff, but you still played a ridiculously high level. That's the, that's the level that Chris can play at. And that he won 9-4 without really ever hitting top gear, took out some brilliant finishes, mi missed a mistake or two, but um, play still played really high. But he just said it was tired, Paul just said it. I think both him and Jack felt very very tired out there at the end of the day I think because of that they'll play it'll be different today yeah I mean Chris played okay but I it, when you look back at it did Chris really win it or did Jack lose it that's the that's the question I'd be asking I feel like Jack not something that we've really seen from him before but his head just went completely early doors obviously we seen it with Jordan yesterday as well that in those sessions towards the end of the day you could tell who, which players the day had caught up with and which ones hadn't. But this is a potentially a quick start from Chris here. It's a lovely positional shot off of two. Just to come down for this yellow on the right hand side. Nice flush in behind it. starter you would have wanted if we have Jack Whelan back as normal I believe he will it's a good first break but that eight ball has just ruined things for him see everything splits out in the open and then that yellow comes around and knocks that eight and sits it on the red which all of a sudden makes the clearance Three, four times as hard. But he needs a good opener here on yellows anyway. White ball didn't really do him any favours either. For as good a break as it was. <coughs> He's going to be sighting this into the top left. Was he maybe trying to open up the red as well? Oh, that's a sh oh, He's un so unlucky to double kiss it. That was an awesome effort. Get rid of both problems at the same time. Would have been one of the shots of the weekend had that red come away. Unfortunately, it wasn't to be. Pot in that yellow, though, you can still get there. Probably wants to use the yellow he was looking at there to come down and can in the red and eight ball <coughs> later on.
going to be looking at getting that eight out with the final ball which is always risky but he doesn't really have much of a choice see it there he's played across for the yellow into the right middle and he's just going to want to come away from the cushion he's just sighting his angle there <coughs> high he might even utilize the bottom cushion unless he really screws into it I prefer going into it without using the cushion just in case the 8 sits but see needs a result here oh no no result whatsoever he needed a bit of luck and he hasn't got it don't really know where Jack can put this and hide it as well that's the other issue he's got well, he's attempted to double and I'll tell you what it's close you know it's close oh wow it, lo it looked like it just flicked something halfway up and started turning towards her. I thought it was on the jaw. And it just, yeah. all of a sudden, it, it sort, of, sort of like a putt rolling in. Do you know what, though? It, it's giving him a chance in the frame because he's yeah. not left Chris a, a nice opener here. And Chris has work. So from a position where Jack actually looked in huge trouble, he's actually gained quite a big advantage. This is horrible for Chris now. Because I feel like he's got to try and pot this red into the top left and avoid knocking the eight ball in. He's got to land on the red that's on the rail. So, yeah, there you go. And a good double attempt has won Jack this frame. It's a rare occasion where taking a pocket gives you massive equity in the frame. I think the problem isn't the three players that were 9-4 behind. It was the three players that were 9-4 in front. I mean, how do you turn it around against Declan Brown and Greg Waddingham and Chris Melling, who are just relentless in the way they play? You pray, Si, that's what you <laughs> do. <laughs> Chat goes... That's the first dry break of the match, or this session. So, he's going to bring Chris to the table. So, it's not going to be another dish, but... It is going to be an opportunity for Chris Melling to get on the hill. Depends how he sees it. I think the reds are actually okay here. I think he can get to the bottom cushion and have enough room to pot the bottom one and come out nicely for the other one above it. But he's decided to go yellows. He's decided that the two together that are also down there aren't an issue for him. But he's overrun that. Not a good opener. A little bit careful here, of, or a bit wary of where that eight ball is. If he's thinking of playing the fin cut on the yellow, no, he's going to go for the hamper. Hampered cut in the corner. This is tricky. Yeah, that was very tricky. So the first dry break brings the first mistake in the frame, well, the, the session as well. Jack gets back to the table. He's maybe got a big pocket down here. For the Reds. That's what he's played for. straight he's going to have to screw this bit of side as well
Another frame on the board for Jack. For that six frames in 16 minutes, so. Has made a ball. Oh, that red just dropping in afterwards doesn't help him. That would have been a nice setter for. At the top end, it would have been a nice, easier starter, but it just falling in the last second just means he's got a bit more to do here he's just trying to work out this initial cannon <coughs> so he's going to be cutting the red <coughs> into the right middle he needs to get good judgment of where that red's going as well as the white because he could easily lose it to the yellow at the bottom oh it might go against that one in fact he's hit it too hard hasn't he yeah, being critical, he has overhit it. <coughs> yeah, now he's going to be chasing this a little bit more. This is this is very difficult, and it's all from stemmed from where that initial red just fell in on the break. This is a tough shot. He's going for it here. I tell you what. Oh, wow. Great shot. Does this ball go? tight isn't it is he looking off the yellow so that tells us it doesn't or it tells us he doesn't like the angle the cue ball's coming off at playing this off the off the yellow means he's going into the other balls the two reds in the eight ball he could potentially go into this red full ball and knock the eight towards the cushion if he can do that then it will give him enough control it's a great shot but he's lost the white oh has he ended up on the free ball plant <laughs> Here we go. This is Chris Melling trying to take this out in true Chris Melling style. Three ball plant now. Oh, is he is he jawed? That's the only other thing. Oh no, he is down. Is he down on this? He's just trying to work this out because this the yellow's just slightly off the cushion compared to the other two. He's got the plant, but he's not on the red. <laughs> Begging for that red just to separate from the cue ball. I know I'm a neutral and I know obviously we're watching along and it's been a great game with Jack and so far but just for the sense of the highlight reel I'd love to see him get out here but now he's looking at he's off bottom the cushion off into right centre this is madness isn't it <laughs> absolute, absolute madness no oh get me out of it no that is a joke oh Chris what are you doing he couldn't <laughs> pot the able now could he <laughs> I'm going home. <laughs> this is outrageous. <laughs> Chris knows this is outrageous. <laughs> I mean, this is out there. Oh he knows it's outrageous. Word. He can't double this, can he? He couldn't double this. I'll go home. The go most home. ridiculous finish I have ever seen. That is, well, that's off the charts off the charts from Chris Melling and he knows it look at him look how much he is laughing at that that was ridiculous an amazing match brilliant performance but that finish was something seriously special Chris Melling is into the semi-final the whole session will be played at 30 seconds a shot Jack Cronin gets us underway in fine style with a lovely break if you are just joining us for the first time when we get to the end of the first session of play if a match is still live as in a frame is still live when the clock runs out that frame will finish but in truth with two no four of the greatest players in the world 60 60 minutes for 12 13 as it is now frames of ball will be fine I'll, I'll be very surprised if we get anywhere near the clock in the opening session of either match so it's a bit more like we're used to in terms of not worrying about the match clock on match management, just playing the game. Deep races, long matches, is what these great players enjoy the most. Luke Terry is still with us here on commentary. Spent the break loosening his own arm up, maybe hoping to get out here one day. 
you know what, I took a couple of frames off of Cormac, so if I can do that, then I feel ready to go, you know. But, um, yeah, it's an interesting semi-final lineup, isn't it? You know, you've got Sean and Chris that are obviously rapid, rapid players, and then Declan and Craig that are quick in their own right as well. So it wouldn't surprise me if, as you say, we end up getting to the amount of frames required in this session before the 60 minutes goes. But it's a tough one to call this because at this point, all of the semi-finalists have had good bits and bad bits across their performances. So it's just judging who's going to time it right. By and large, Declan has not made a, much of an error all weekend long. I know what you're saying. Maybe just a, a couple of frames here and there at the start of that quarter final, but he is. No one's got close to him this weekend. 14.71 the quarter final. I think 13.5 was the closest anyone had been before that. And it shows you he's playing brilliant stuff. Yeah, and that was a proper hurdle against Sean Sharkey as well, a player that yeah. has had a good year and is as his opening professional tour and also not only that there's a little bit extra in that obviously because they are Irish counterparts Sean and Declan that things could potentially change and swing but yeah Declan quickly eradicated that issue and since then yeah he's been formidable I think it's fair to say that Declan's the favourite for this match and it's very fair to say that Chris Melling's the favourite for the second semi-final but once you get to this stage you are I'm talking about fine margins as Declan finishes the frame off and takes the opening frame with a break clearance. I mean, the lowest ranked player that obviously was in the quarterfinals was Chris Day, and I, I genuinely believe that Chris is a top 20 player now because of the changes that he's made this year. He has been this season for sure. The deck goes dry, so signs that momentum is starting to build with Sean Chipperfield. there he was quite close to that and he's given himself an angle to go straight into that problem red and yellow almost similar to the frame before this time gets it out first time finish here for Sean yeah while Sean's got this momentum he needs to run with it it's I mean obviously it's very minuscule at this point but I suppose Sean is second favorite in this game to Dex just because of Declan's achievements and the season that Dex had yeah, makes that ball makes a couple the best break I've seen him hit all weekend long certainly from the cut break do you know what they're both crunching it at the moment aren't they yeah. he, the, the first one he hit was good as well and to be honest with you the one that he missed on was good as well but it just didn't quite land for him I still think Dex at his best if the front ball's working but the good thing for, for Declan now is he's got two breaks he's probably got three or four because he will change and go he can go more central and he can go wider with the front ball but He's got two go-to breaks at the moment, and if one's not working, he can change and go to the other one. And that maybe wasn't the case a couple of years ago where he sort of had plan A and then he was sort of trying to find something. I was going to say, how important is it now, obviously, but at these different events, we almost it feels like the tables are slightly different no matter where you go. How important is it to have diversity in your break? It depends how good your break is. I mean, I've never seen Jack Willen do anything other than break down the centre and screw it straight back. Uh, 
but his break is arguably the best in the world. So, um, and he, <laughs> you also don't see Gareth Potts change his break very often, but he does. He changes his break all the time, but it's subtle. It's it might be a a ball movement either way. It might be the, the, how he strikes the ball more than anything else, and it he is his feeling and the way he hits it rather than anything that's massively noticeable. Um, obviously for for Declan, it's he goes from the the side power break, the front ball power break, and the and the cut break. But I think it is important because every table plays slightly differently. You've got to find what works for you on that table on that day. Yeah, this has been a very good response from Deck. Got his opportunity, and is he going to take it? He is. Five two. Seven frames played in 15 minutes is some going. That's exactly what Sean needed. Yeah, good layout here. If the red he's nearest to goes, then reds will not take him long. I think it does. If not, he might have to go yellows if it doesn't. In the red past the eight ball to bottom left. I did go comfortably. He is leaving the eight ball on the opposite end of the table with its natural pocket covered. So he does need a good angle on his last ball, but he has all the room in the world and no traffic in the way to get on that eight ball into whichever pocket he chooses, most likely left centre. Yeah, just screw down slightly, leave the final right into the right hand corner. He's way overrun this. Yeah, slightly poor one that. Well actually these just made position on the eight ball really difficult. Because yeah, he's yeah. got to judge the screw back here because he could easily slide past these yellows. Yeah, he's now playing right centre, you'd imagine. Unless it goes bottom right corner, but I don't think it does. Well, I don't quite know what he did there. Did he just not get through the ball? Yeah, complete miss it. Where's he looking here? Seems like the unmissable clearance for Sean Chipperfield. This is huge because now, if he misses this opportunity where his momentum's gone as well, this could completely turn the match. Oh, wow. I thought he nearly fluked it. But what he has done is he sat the yellow on that top jaw. Probably the most awkward place to leave a ball in open play. Deck will still be thrilled to get to the table though, won't he? That was fairly routine for a player at Sean's level. Yeah, I can't believe how badly wrong he went. He just overhit the final, the penultimate red. on the, the yellow to top left just back himself to cue it in in which case is he playing on the eight ball afterwards so you'd get rid of the one at the top of the table I mean you just saw him come and have a really good look about whether that yellow drops in the centre it, it doesn't look like it to us I think if he is going to play it up the line I think he plays it next I think that was a good opportunity where you had a couple of yellows around that you didn't have to get prime position anywhere he obviously believes he's got a can in it so because of that, he's played up, and now he's going to go for it. He's got the perfect angle. He's missed it. That will be disappointing. Not very disappointing. That was a, a very big target for a player of Declan's ability. And not only has he missed it, he's then lost the white to the bottom cushion as well, because he was obviously judging for the cannon. 
He played it a lot firmer than I thought he would. Yeah. Simply because I thought all he needed was just to touch it. So as long as he... It would be a very bad cannon to kind of touch it at a medium pace and the key ball just sort of hang around where it catches the yellow. Beyond the yellow, he's moving or choice down the table, potentially, depending on whether it flicks out to the middle of the table or, or he's not. He's going game here. He's going to try and cut this in the middle and bring it out. Got to be fearing of the in-off as well. Went for it, missed it. Good pot, but nothing doing on the yellow. And now it gets a bit tougher. Planning to land on it. It's not bad. It's almost exactly where you'd put it if you had to play on it. He's got cue this well though, otherwise he will just go in off. This is a tough yellow, but it wins him the frame if he makes it. And he's made it. Brilliant. And to get to back to five all is seriously impressive from where he was. The way he cues and how easily he made that ball is why I thought he wouldn't try and move it. It's such a nuisance for players, especially when you're trying to cue straight and you just end up feeling like your cue's kind of grinding against it in case you, you cue quite low on a shot. I agree with that. I am excited. I mean, I've, I have played on the, the table, but not the finished version. It was one of the uh, pre-models as it was being developed and designed. So, good looking table though. Declan with a chance here. Gets distracted once again. There's not that many people in the venue today and every little noise is actually more distracting. When it's busier and it's noisier, it's less distracting. Yeah, it's amplified, isn't it? Does well. Declan's somebody that's very measured, so distractions like that, he knows once again how to hit that reset button, how to, how to go again. Hugely disappointing for Sean if he goes in behind after this session after being 5-1 ahead. But in reality, it's only one or two mistakes that have really cost him. Declan's played well. I think Sean has made a couple of errors he'd love to have again. A couple of mistakes from 5-1 from up that you weren't really expecting. At least two, maybe even three that have got away from him in the session. Make sure here. I don't know if he's just the wrong side of straight on the red to bottom left. Hampered. Yeah, little grimace as he walks round. Knows he just needs to pot the ball, but. Being hampered just makes that pot tricky. Yeah, very good. And that should see the man from Ireland open up a very, very small one frame lead end of this first session. Both players have put in some good stuff but Declan Brennan is the man with the momentum as we go into the break. Six out of seven frames to end the session. Five one down you did not expect Declan Brennan to be walking away with an advantage but he is seven six. We said he'd be over the moon at seven six. We were talking about seven six down. Time for the opening session.
of Chris Melling and Craig Waddingham and their semi-final here at the Ultimate Pool Masters. 60 minutes on the match clock and we'll see 13 frames in this session of the 27 frame match. And a painful start for Chris Melling as he flies into the centre pocket with the opening break. Craig Waddingham will get the first chance. I mean, how's that gone in at that angle? That's almost impressive how flush that's gone in. But, yeah, this is a good opportunity for Craig to settle himself. Obviously, he's just come off the back of a good win against a similar style opponent in Jordan that is going to be very quick fire. Against those kind of opponents, you want to be able to settle in quick. Don't want to allow that someone like Chris to start getting on a run because at that point, almost similar to how Sean started against Deck, it's actually it's normally very hard to find a way back. sure if he's quite far enough to take the one below the eight ball which would have been plan A not really a problem to go this way around though yeah he doesn't really have to do anything does he he can just kind of kill the white ball where the yellow is if he wants to and play it in the middle or he can play out yeah yeah good start Again. Made one on the previous break for the first time in a while. Going back into the court final as well, but back to being dry. Yeah, you know what? I think even when he made the ball in the last frame, it wasn't convincing. It was a kick in off in the middle. Sometimes, obviously, a bit of luck sways your way and you can make a ball. With other breaks, though, you see, like, for example, some of Chris's, the ball just goes straight in the middle. There's no question about it there's no getting kicked in off or anything like that it's thorough so I don't know maybe if that's almost a negative thing for Craig to have had that positive result with that break previously because it almost would have convinced him to stay with it even though maybe it still won't offer the rewards has lost the white again here a bit he's okay he's on the red to top right but definitely wasn't the ball he played on just cool. I think he knows that he'd miss that yeah Chris one of the players that gets disgusted when he sees balls like that go in but to his advantage here Just got to make sure he's got an angle here. Yeah, that's fine. If you come up straight there, you're in no man's land. So he has the opportunity now to get this white out. Out to him, whether he tries to play all the way up for the middle pocket or whether he tries to leave one top right. Just that yellow that's parallel with the white and the red just plays a little bit big. to avoid it. Needs to run. Yeah, that's perfect. Couldn't have put it much better with your hand. A 
Both of his building were all square. Yeah, Chris just gets that. Diving header of a red. Looked like he was going to go dry at one point, just one slips into the top left. Pretty sure the two yellows that are together plant into the top right. If that is the case, then it's a good opportunity on yellows here. I'm really interested that you played that. It's a great shot. But I feel like they did plant. I don't know if it was just me, but lovely shot just to not be too open. Chris just looks to have picked up the pace a little bit here as well. Seems a little bit bogged down at the start. But clinical couple of frames, putting 5 4 ahead. Break was big, but nothing's gone. Park the white. Once again, textbook break, but nothing doing. And it is going to bring Craig to the table. A good time for Chris to break try for Craig as well. Just as he was building up that momentum, he can he can get this opportunity he can go back within one which obviously against someone like Chris is so important you don't want to start falling 3-4 behind because you know that it's going to take a few turns to be able to get that back the yellow to top left now and that's going to be 6-5 barring something absolutely miraculous good response from Craig oh it's big and it's pretty good tucked in the yellow that was close to the cushion on the right hand side fairly natural pattern here you get on the one on the left hand side now and that gets you onto well the one nearest the the one on the left hand side goes bottom right which then connects to all the ones in the middle so as long as he gets on the one to left center he can stop it dead and play that one or he can come down and take one into the middle he's got options but yeah that's the all he's looking at 
Yeah, it's not too bad. I mean, if he's a little bit off angle, he can roll through, take the middle yellow of the three to right middle. Which I think he should from here. I think he's got just that turn of angle. If he tries to hold it, he might end up just the wrong side of straight and then be going towards the yellows. So just by dropping this through takes that all out of play. Yeah, the, the only way you go wrong here is being too particular. Yeah. Hit the red full in the face on this one and it is done. Yeah. Just got the inside of full, but still. I mean, you can't. Chris Manning doesn't make mistakes from here. And in the end, he's just pulled ahead. Very good session of Paul, but Chris Manning just gets the better of it at the end to just give himself an 8-5 lead. Still a long, long way to go in the match. But Chris Manning at the halfway point takes the lead. There are four players in this tournament. And all of them are more than capable. And Sean goes dry. That break was working so well from him in the last session. That is not what he would have wanted to see. <coughs> and it's going to bring Deck to the table. Quite done enough to open it. Now a half an inch off the cushion and he would have been able to drop that into the left middle at the latter stage. Because it's just stuck, it makes things a little bit more awkward. What I'd be looking at potentially later on in the clearance is the red just low of the right middle. He can use the yellow for a big bag. Should he do that? It makes it easier to land on that red down the rail. Which is almost what I expect him to play with the next one. Yeah. Maybe a little bit further than I thought he was going to. Yeah, he, he tried to land straight on it. And because he's... Is he just off straight? I think he might be fine. I think he can just kill this white. Yeah. So he's still playing this red down the rail. He's not straight on it, so... May need to do a little bit of movement with the white. Unless he can absolutely kill it. Yeah, decided he need to move it. Just coming off the jaw. This is probably the biggest shot now in the frame this transition from right to left. Not an easy one. But he's judged it well. Maybe wanted to be a little bit further over. I think he ideally would have wanted to take the red into top left first. He's a little bit wide on it, so him playing this one first means He's going to be taking the final red at a little bit more distance, which obviously makes it missable. We had a similar situation, actually, in one of the frames previously with Sean Chipperfield, where he left himself that slight more distance on the red and ended up missing it. So, good queuing required here for Deck. If he wants to get out in this frame, he'll probably just stun into the yellow above to guarantee a shot at the eight ball. Big shot. And he's missed it in a similar way to Sean did, missing it thick. So Sean getting away with that dry break. We'll have the opportunity to counter in the first frame. The 
these early exchanges in the second session are so pivotal. I'm a little bit surprised that Sean went for the cannon on that. Felt like if he wanted to, he could have just played onto it using the yellow over the middle. Got enough safe space on the table that if he did want to take it on, he could. Well, that's clever. Plays the double into the corner, knowing that the eight ball was always covering the red. Playing with insurance policies means that you can play with more freedom around the table. He's gone for the cat and he's unlucky that he sat on the ball. The only thing going into clusters so often happens that if the momentum of that white ball is killed they just end up sitting on a ball and it's not easy to hide this white ball now I wonder if he can maybe <coughs> slide off the one that's closest to the bottom left and just sneak in behind with a bit of side it's a risky shot would pay dividends or another option is he just hides up the table or he comes off the cushion and tries to pot the yellow oh well well didn't want to see the rest of that frame Sean Chipperfield needs to get get a frame on the board and first good break oh, better than good break it's a great break Once again, was able to part that white. Okay, he got kicked, but... Oh, no. That was a golden opportunity, and he's... He's thrown one in at the wrong time. Would be interesting to get a repeat of that miss. He was pretty quick down on it. The camera hadn't fully adjusted to by the time he played it. <laughs> you just sense with Sean at the moment that the concentration's gone a little bit. Oh, he seems to be darting around the rim a little bit. Yeah, that's a very routine pot to miss for for someone of Sean's quality. As I do just have Simon Webb rejoin me in the comms box. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's always a talking point with Sean and his temperament and his it, every now and then it can be questioned and that can have a, a factor that could be a part of the reason why he's been on in semi-finals on repeat but hasn't quite been able to make the breakthrough and win a tournament. There'll be a, an, uh, there'll be a, a moment somewhere in a tournament where something will go wrong, and you're asked to dig deep, and sometimes lets that get to him. <coughs> Make the case that maybe if he makes that breakthrough, he could then relax, and it stops it becoming an issue. But at the moment, it's something you just to keep an eye on from time to time. To be fair, I think in Sean's position, you probably need to be looking up to someone like the person you're playing at the moment, someone like Deck that, albeit has had success with ultimate pools, almost been cursed by it a few times. Obviously, his record with the six red shootouts was horrendous until he eventually won the Champions League. But also, he had that huge kind of lull where he just couldn't win a title. He kept making finals, couldn't get over the line and once again he, he kind of broke that spell a little bit with the Champions League and Sean needs to kind of use that as inspiration that if you keep getting there eventually you will knock the door down but you've just got to maintain your composure when you get there and that 
is exactly what Declan Brandon is doing right now. And that is now 10-6. He's opened up a bit of a bit of space between him and his opponent. <laughs> Oh, has he put the yellow, has, he, has he put the white in the middle? Oh, that's careless. Oh, if anything is going to change the game, it's going to be something like that. I cannot believe he's put the white in the middle pocket. Okay, get over to that side. It wasn't the easiest shot in the world, but if anything, you under hit it. Yeah, so poor. Sounds harsh to say, but. He's done all the hard work and had to frame at his mercy. And Sean Chipperfield, for all of that negativity that's kind of got into his head the last couple of frames, that's a poor one though. If he can knock in this eight ball, it won't matter too much. Just about. Big moment in this match. That was 11-7 or 10-8. And 10-8 on Sean making a bad error is huge. Yeah, I mean, look at this. He knew it. straight away. Oh, look at the break. Look at that break. That was massive. One, two, three. I think there were four. What an opportunity for Sean Chipperfield here. Doesn't want to be dead straight on this yep on this yellow. He just had a bit of angle. always play it off the red and this game all of a sudden Simon has turned right on its head hard to believe what's happened really makes a ball how's the split pretty good oh yeah, that's good he's got to go reds he has a good opener it's not an easy opener but he has an opener does the red on the right hand side centre pocket is that a drop in the middle or is that a problem ball I think that drops in the middle from the overhead so it's a good piece of queuing on the first shot and then go from there he needs to hit this really well yeah lovely and a nice flick as well thing is if he's a bit straight it's slightly awkward I think he might just have enough that you can top top through needs it to travel needs to travel he's on the outer one it's not too bad but it's not the one he wanted to be on but exactly. he's on one it shouldn't be too bad because they all go in the same pocket the bottom one here if it if it gone two rolls previously then it would have been a lot simpler if he drops the one in the center now it, it, he could end up <coughs> back in the same situation at least that's a slow oh no can he see the bottom one can he just get the edge of that to cut it in? He's gone about this in a way that makes... Well, I'm just really surprised that once he landed where he landed, take the bottom one and just play back up. Mm. You could have, you can be low on the red to well, the one he was playing on there and, and get onto the one into the centre. 
He's done really well to hold here. I wasn't sure he was even on that. Yeah, that's a great bit of queuing to hold. Okay, he's not got an easy route up to this eight ball, but he's done well to stay on the red. Because that was ultra thin. Can he get out for the eight ball? Oh, he wanted full ball and he's not got it. It's just slid off. All gone wrong from that transition from top to bottom. Two more rolls, he's out easy. Even then, I feel like he should have done, but not been able to find the pattern. Massive moment in the match again. Mm. And all of a sudden, it feels like Declan that's cutting that slightly more frustrated figure because... Yeah, right enough. Big visit now for Sean Chipperfield. This being on the Declan Brennan break as well. He knows that if he takes this out, he's going to have a good opportunity to go two clear at a really important stage in the match. At this point, every ball counts. Huge for Sean. Big frame. Crunched it. Makes a ball. How's the split? Not great. Yeah. Work. Work everywhere you look. Don't think he's got an opening ball. Certainly not one that you would uh, be keen for. No, I think he's got, what, yellow top left. Don't think there's an option on reds. Does he think this plants? He's maybe got half a pocket here. This is, this is tough. Great opener. Oh, that's fantastic. Staring at that thinking, that doesn't go. And this plant has actually just opened up the frame for him as well. Yeah, he really wanted to be Reds. Good friend Rony McCarthy watching along. Hoping that Declan can do the business here. His former coach and mentor. <laughs> Remove the coach, Declan says. It's all just going to be about when he gets rid of the red on the right hand side he's gone down for it now he's just got one good positional shot to play here and if he gets it right you'd think he's home brilliant yeah, yellow does the work for him that's fantastic this has been absolute granite from Declan Brennan because when Sean Chipperfield came flying back at him and the run started to go a little bit against him. You would have thought he could have got his head down. Not the Declan Brennan we've dealt with this year. Constantly in the deep end of tournaments. And it's going to be another final for the man from Northern Ireland. Absolutely brilliant. What a match. What a match. All the ebbs and flows you will see with a deep match. 27 great frames, 27 frames of drama. Declan Brennan, though, he wins by one. He's into a fourth final of 2024. Looking for a second title. The score, the score underneath maybe isn't necessarily correct, but Chris Melling is 8-5 up on Craig Waddingham as we enter the second session. 
I think Craig would like it to be that, to, to be nil-nil, but fortunately it's not. 8-5 is the scoreline, and Craig has the break, and he's made a ball on the opener here. 60 minutes on the match clock won't really be a factor. It wasn't in the last one either. It is a, a case of, not sure that's the break from this match, actually. Um, but uh, it is going to be a case of who can get to 14, and we'll play Captain Brennan in the final. I suppose it's quite nice from Declan's position now. OK, he's come through a right battle against Sean Chipperfield, but at the same time, he now gets an hour to watch these two sweat it out. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I, I often wonder if it's a factor. Players are so used to going back to back, but with it being such long races and such long matches. Important for Craig here to get off to a quick start. Once again, I mean, I think more important than playing any other player, I think, to be honest, doing it against Chris Melling is probably the most important person to do it against. Really wants to win the mini session to start off with. Ooh. And he's not here. Cushion, is he? Mm, not sure. Yes, this might get reviewed. I don't know if Chris is asking for it to be reviewed. I think the referee is does checking it, it. Does it graze the jaw? It didn't look like it, did it? I mean, my gut feeling is no. He, in, I mean, the reason he... The reason it didn't drop is because he nearly missed it thin. Let's have another look at it and we'll find out. The referee, Harris Tezgau, is going to review it, has gone to VAR. So let's have a look. Does this red graze the jaw? No. No, it so bends it is in. definitely a foul. I think it actually was going to, but it looked like it kind of bent into the pocket a little bit. So it will be cue ball in hand here for Chris Melling, just to add insult to injury there for Craig, giving away the foul as well as the the miss. Yeah, not the ideal start. It's one thing to obviously miss an opportunity, it's another one to give away a foul and allow your opponent to develop what he needs to develop. is just doing the maths here as to how he can maximise his use of ball in hand, how he can ultimately open up as many yellows as possible here. And he's decided that using the middle yellow is the way to go. Yeah. Okay, he hasn't potted the red, and that red is still over that middle pocket, but it frees up the other two yellows enough to make them potable to other pockets, which is advantageous. As well as that, the yellow on the left-hand side that's underneath the red can also go in off it now to the left middle. And it's what he played for there. He didn't want to graze it on the way through. It just makes that window a little bit smaller. But so long as he hits the right side of the red like that, he'll be good to have a run at this frame. That's perfect. Overhearing some of Chris's conversations before the semi-finals kicked off, actually, he was saying that he felt like he was queuing really well. He felt quite comfortable out there. And it's there for everyone to see. Makes a ball. Oh, no, he doesn't. Ooh, he does. Yes, he does. And what's the layout like? It's OK. It is more than OK. I was tracking the red in the bottom left-hand corner. I didn't, see, I didn't even see the yellow. How does it not go in? Mm, wants to be reds. Doesn't really... Does he not have an opener? Might have to go yellows. The yellow at the bottom of the table. Doesn't have a pocket. Not, does it go bottom right? Suppose he does, ha does have reds. He has one down, down the table. He might have the one at the top of the table, in which case it's not a problem at all. Yeah, he's he's OK.
Hasn't worked this quite as he would have liked. Not sure if he can get high enough here to make this simple. I think he can. I think he can play with a bit of running side and it will throw off the second cushion a bit. Yeah, there you go. Good get there. Just needed to get to the straight. Was he a turn short of it where he stopped in his tracks? Maybe he is. If the black goes to the same pocket, it's no problem. Yep. Good finish again, and that's 11-6. And if Chris was to win here, it'd be a repeat of that final. It would be. It's actually quite interesting because Declan Brennan has two ultimate ball titles to his name. Chris Manning was the opponent in both finals. It's not a bad man to have a good record against, to tell you that. Yeah. Do you know, it was quite funny, actually, obviously, when we found out the news yesterday that the world number one had been out, ousted. It was really interesting speaking to a couple of players because they believed that Jake was actually the player that probably has the best record against Tom in recent history, which... I, I, I debate the best. I think Declan's got the best record against Tom at the moment, but he has got... <laughs> Jake does have a good record, yeah. Yeah, and it was just one of those that obviously you, you never even think to calculate it because Tom does such a good job dispatching all the pros that are listed. Apart from Declan Brennan. Yeah. Apart from Declan. He has a very good record against him. Yeah, to be honest, you'd probably end up thinking down the list for players that have also got a good record against him. I mean, from memory, maybe people like Brian Halcrow and Jez Graham that have stolen results off of him this year. A lot of people have had one result against him, but I'm not sure. There's too many that have had a few. But it's like, <laughs> it, was, it was like Sam Allardyce for England, though, wasn't yeah. it? You take your 100% record whether you play <laughs> one or ten. It's true. Gareth Potts beat him twice in a weekend at a Pro Series a couple of years ago. It was just before he went on the run that he's currently on. This has been good from Craig. Potentially two clean kills. Although he has come straight there, which isn't ideal. Just wanted a bit of angle to come out for this eight ball. Because it's just beyond that eight spot. It's actually a bit of a thinner cut than it looks. Being close to the cushion. This isn't a gimme. But it is an important eight ball. Very good. Parked the white, absolutely parked the white. Right in the centre of the table. The reds look good, very good. And this is going to be Chris's opening opportunity to get this match wrapped up. That, that is figuring that he can get to the red near the eight spot. I thought he could. get this next shot nicely just because the two reds are quite close together he's going to be landing on I thought he might be landing on a short position he's going to have a second go at it get the angle a little bit better yeah that's lovely and on reflection in this game Craig hasn't done too much wrong maybe the odd mistake in the first session but it'd be harsh to kind of pluralise that as the reason that he's lost this match I think in reality I think the man at the table has just been exceptional he's been brilliant hasn't he and not for the first time the magician is pulling that magic rabbit out and he's going to win again and be in another final it's a repeat of the Champions League final as Chris Melling gets the better of Craig Waddingham. It is a best of 29 frame match. Two sessions, 60 minutes in each session. The first session is going to be 14 frames played. 
and Declan Brennan's going to get the first opportunity. Luke Terry still joins me here on commentary. And Luke, we've watched all the players this weekend. And how do we pick a winner from, from this one? How are you seeing this one going? I mean, from the outlook, I mean, it's been, it's been a joke of a field. I mean, the players that have got to this point, the longest races we've ever had, all of the big names, bar Tom, were right at the end, tail end of the tournament. And I think, arguably, it's been the best field that we've had in Ultimate yeah, Pool to date. These two making it here. I think Declan has been the most consistent player of the tournament. I don't think he's dropped his level at all. I think even maybe when he's not been dishing off the lampshades, he's done exactly what he's needed to do to get results. That was apparent in that semi-final against Shaw. And that was the only time he was really tested and brought the distance. On the flip side, you argue that Chris has probably been the form player of the tournament, the, the man that's stood up against everyone else and pulled off some absolute magic on the way. So, I mean, tough one to pick. Maybe off form, slight advantage Melling, but it's anyone's. He's making a quick start here. All he needs to do is make sure he comes out to the middle of the table again. Once he's done that, he's on the yellow to top right. An eight ball waiting in the middle. This is just the start that Declan Brennan will be looking for himself on the match. Both players know each other well, both players know what to expect from each other. It's another match, it's a match you want to start well. And it's a match break. that Declan Renner has started well. Very nice break clearance to take the opening frame. cut break but sometimes with a cut break all the balls go to one side of the table which is exactly what's happened there loads of traffic that that red being dead on the left hand side is ex is especially killer he is going to opt to go yellows yeah he's got an angle if he wants to get an angle on the yellow to bottom left to then go into the, the cluster which he has got so this might all open up he needs to make sure that nothing sticks here. And he's also got to make sure that if he's cannon in the red as well, that that red's going to go clear. I think he's going to move it all out, hit this fairly firm. April should go into the red. He'll take that. It's pretty good, isn't it? It's, oh, it's I was about to say it's really good, but it's not. It, the eight ball only goes to the bottom of the table. Everything else goes and has a pocket, but he has to take the yellow to left center, I think, to continue. I don't know whether, if the straight one goes to the bottom right corner now, it's fine. If it doesn't, because you want to be, you'd love to leave the yellow to left center as your last ball. Yeah, I don't think he's going to have that availability. Yeah, no, he's looking at it now. So, I imagine that the last ball he's going to leave. Oh, he's short on the one foot. Oh, no, he has rolled on. But. I imagine that the last one he's going to leave is probably going to be the one either at the bottom or actually the one to top left he could do it with as well. But I imagine because of the angle he's on here, he's probably going to come across for the one to the top left now. I think the one top left only. You know, it's only a good ball for the eight ball if you get on it late at uh, last round oh, with a perfect angle. That's loose. I think he's straight. Yeah. I think it's the right thing to do to get it out of the way, though. It is, but what can he do from here? Can he generate an angle? Can he? Oh, you bet he can. He's done really well there. Yeah, and he's got a good angle here just to stun across and leave a good angle. It's got important it doesn't go too far. He's got quite a small margin of error on this shot. I like the idea of actually stunning across into the red. The red on the 
just right of the eight spot. Oh wow, that, he's, he has, he's completely let go of it. He's not just gone too far for the angle, he's gone too far for the pot. Right. That's two loose ones in the same frame from Declan. And I can't really tell you why. He can snick this back, but he's going to have to trust to a bit of luck with a cannon. He's gone for the double. He's got the double. Oh, he hasn't got the double. He has got the double. Well, I mean... Well, has he? He's going to come back up, is it? I, yeah, I mean... Well, that Chris, definitely wasn't five seconds. The, the rule isn't five seconds. That's the issue. It's going to be reviewed, but the rule is very much if the balls have stopped and then it falls in, it is. it comes back up. So Chris is... Um, Chris is working off old information. Uh, Rich has this right. Yeah, if all the balls If all the balls have stopped here, then it, it will come back up. I don't we will see it again. I don't know, because it kind of started leaning towards the pocket, so I don't know if it was still leaning as it dropped. Here we go. It rattles, and then you see it start to lean. Does it? Need to see it again. I, don't, I, I was looking also at the cue ball and the eight ball, and I think they were both stationary, so nothing else was moving. So it's just whether the yellow's moving here. It's a big call, but it's also he's snookered <laughs> on the eight ball, even if he does have to play the next shot. But let's have a look. Yeah, this is a, it's a big decision. You see it there, just clips the bottom jaw, rattles. You see it still moving there, still moving there, still moving there. Stops there. Yeah. A very brief stop. Stops for me. Stops for me. Everything else has stopped. I think the decision was correct. It certainly didn't stop for five seconds, but as Chris was saying. But it's uh, well, it probably it's not, that's not the rule. The rule is if it stops at all. And, be, in, in, and it clearly did. To be, to be honest with you, it probably stops for a quarter of a second, but it's enough. So minimal, but... It's just enough. Chris looking quite confused. But yeah, I mean... I mean, if you're in Dex's position, he... I mean, I know, obviously, that... I think the, the, the issue is, I think Chris would rather it had gone in. Yeah, Chris, that's what I mean. Chris doesn't I mean want, want it to, It's a strange one, because you're, you're thinking that it's benefiting Deck here, but... Uh, sorry, it's benefiting Chris, but it's not. It's benefiting Deck. Great shot to get the eight ball out. Rakes of backspin and left hand side to throw that off of two cushions. Yeah, because of the way that things have gone, it does force Chris to play a skill shot, so or a cannon out. Potentially may have to go for the cannon because of how thin the angle is here, but Make yeah, sure this is switch off to the silent please. Obviously a phone going off in the arena as well doesn't help, but it's a it's not a great cannon if he can drop the one in the middle he's going to have a skill shot horrible these off the cushion oh, in fact he took it long and he's missed it and really surprised by Chris there he's come out he's obviously not happy with the decision that was made and maybe that's the reason it forced him to go a little bit more positive and aggressive there. But he's he's got to find a loss of turn whilst playing a snooker, which was pretty easy to do for him from where they were originally. You remember the eight balls on the side cushion and there was loads of traffic in the way. And he's decided to try and take out a big finish. I'm, I'm really, really surprised by his decision making. Makes a ball. Another awkward split. Wants to be yellow, so he's going to take the kind of finished one into the middle bag. Now that he's got there, the big issue is going to be the eight ball. How do you open it? He has got one yellow down there. 
he can utilise, but just making sure that you've got balls afterwards. Is he going to try and screw into it? We'll go into it off the bottom with a load of sides. I've never really looked on. That red that's kind of nearish the eight spot always just looked a little in the way of that. Great cue. Hampers over the black and red, pots the one down the line. Still has that issue of the eight ball, how he removes it. He's going to do it off the final ball. He's going to pot this in the middle, put all his eggs in one basket with the yellow over the bo bottom right. He's okay. Right, just play this with a punch of side. Yeah, you can see him go right over to the right hand side of the ball there. Oh, he's lost the white slightly. He's on it. This eight ball for four each. Very good, good eight ball, wasn't it? Very good eight ball. break again isn't it the splits a bit better this time as well a couple of them he's had little clusters but this one's wide open in terms of a ball set you'd prefer reds are the choice you can play up the table with this one and potentially get rid of all the problems up there early Or you can go the opposite way and get rid of the problems at the bottom end of the table. Doesn't really matter. shot that can go wrong you feel in this visit and it has not just a little bit of tracking required which she gets easily I almost don't mind the idea of removing the one to right middle now just because it's hard to land on a nice angle with it last whereas with here he can come up now and then just track down the right hand side for the able. Yeah, very nice. And this for seven five. Guaranteed to not be losing at the end of the session. Gets to the halfway mark. Although the one match that was a potential hurdle that he nearly slipped up on was Greg Batten, early doors. He had a big lead in the first session of that, and I remember Greg pegged him back. But did enough to get over the line, comfortable enough, 13-10. Chris with a good break there. <coughs> Work to do. The red and yellow on the top cushion need to be landed on if you're going to go for reds he's potentially going to screw up for it straight away Extension call. yeah it's a good ball to get rid of this one Red balls in play. Caught. straight's not good though and that's what he's got yeah he may have to play well either with some reverse side or just leave the red at distance that's almost touching the yellow in the middle of the table. 
Oh, but don't miss the red. Trying to use the yellow. Got that one wrong. Poor end to the session here for Chris Manning. Yeah, I'm surprised he didn't just screw back and back his potting ability there a little bit. Yeah. Not a good opportunity for Declan here, but an opportunity to get a foothold in the frame. A frame that he will be desperate to take. Part. No position. Hmm. He's trying to hide the white. Trying to sit it on the eight. That's a great shot. Under time pressure as well. Amazing judgment on the cushions. Obviously that they slide in that he was fairly close to the yellow and the cushion as well. Chris looking to see can he get to that red over the top left. A little bit of side, should be able to swerve it in. Oh, not how he intended it. And because of that, he's put the red safe. Yeah, hard to believe he's actually made the, the red considering he flicked uh, the wrong one. Yeah, Chris is just gonna sit him on the yellow there, that's a clever shot. Not a shot you see very often. As long as he's not touching ball, it works out well for, for Chris. I think if you're deck here, there's not a lot you can do, you can maybe try and sit the white on the cushion as close to the red as possible so that even if you leave Chris the cut he's not really got much control of it well he went for the off the cushion pot oh, oh he'll take that <laughs> he will take that I'll tell you what master of snooker and beyond the eight ball is Declan Brennan at the moment but Chris See the magician that he is will be looking to find a way out. I just wonder where he's hit those balls. I wonder if the two reds can potentially plant into the bottom set. right. I don't think they're set. I think it's it would have to be made, yeah, obviously, I but I think it'd have to be squeezed quite a long way. Where's he going here? Oh, he agreed with me. Well, it was close. I say, what is some effort, isn't it? Well, you got the strike. It's just they weren't set to go in. It, it, you're trying to squeeze them quite a long way. And he squeezed it, essentially squeezed it the wrong way there from the line he was coming in. And a good opportunity now for Deck to level the scores after kind of having to sit and watch Chris eradicate his lead and then jump in front of him. Just got to play one good positional shot. Needs to have a nice angle to, to come down for the yellow on the left hand side. Maybe he wouldn't mind another roll shouldn't be an issue, just a bit of check side to avoid the red. He got close to that red, but he played it well. This is missable, just injecting a touch of pace. So got to make sure it'll be all square and he'll be very happy with that. Rattled a bit, but it went in. And it's going to be this eight ball for deadlock after session one. 
It is deadlock, and I think Declan Brennan will be the happier of the two players to be 7-7. Seven, seven. Both players still need eight frames. Fascinating early session action there. A fascinating opening final, or opening session to the final. It really was 4-1 it was to Declan Brennan before there was a controversial rules moment, and that seemed to spur on Chris Melling, who won five straight after that. In the end, he missed a couple of opportunities to stretch that lead out, and Declan will be the happier of the two to be at 7-7. Interesting thing at the, the halfway stage is that all Chris wanted to talk about was the was the rules issue, and it seemed to really still be focused and fresh in his mind, even though it, it sort of spurred him on to, to some success. So it's just interesting to get an insight into Chris's mind. Do you know what? It is, it's one of those that obviously Chris has been around the circuit a long, long time, and I mean, there's been several different rule changes, and if you miss one, you you are going to question it. I mean, it is one of those, I suppose, slightly talkative areas where you could discuss whether it's right, whether it's wrong. Everybody has a differing opinion, but obviously we deal in the rules that are set yeah, as that, they are by <laughs> international rules, and and you know, unfortunately. It's one of those that, whether it is right or wrong, you've just got to kind of deal with it and move on, which, to be honest with you, in the match, he did really, really well. So I don't see why he wouldn't translate that now for the rest of the match. But Yeah, it was a, a real strange one. But, yeah, I mean, it's probably the first time it's happened to him uh, or in a match he's played in since the, the change was made a year or two ago. It just doesn't happen very often. Well, it would make for a good Facebook discussion. So <laughs> if, any, if anybody's going to go forward and do it, then be my guest. Yeah. Arguing that the rule is wrong is very different to complaining that the decision was wrong. Because let's get it right. Rich Rhodes made an absolute spot-on decision. Yeah, it's not easy being a referee, is it? You, yeah. You're always playing the arch-villain. But he's a, been a quality referee all weekend. And fair play to Rich Rhodes. Opportunity for deck. This red that's high of the white ball. And he may be tempted to try and get rid of it down the line. I can't see an easy way to land on it. He could come round, but where the other red is on the right hand side as well, he really needs to get rid of it now. So that's why he's taking this long, difficult one into the top left. He's got it. And now he needs to come from the underside of the eight ball to land on the red into the right middle. Very good. This has been a good o good opening out from deck so long as he knocks this red in. Very good start from Declan. Very similar to the start of the opening session as well. Good break, good finish, good start. Can he make a ball? Just about. A little bit of a diving header there in the top right. Yeah, came off about three different balls before eventually one popped through and knocked it in. Comes out as a pretty good split. Extension Eight ball an issue if he wants to go yellows. Does he play yellow bottom right, just nudge into the red, create the path through the eight ball bottom right? And you have to play a good shot to the top right then. I think it is the one to play. I think you can, you're keeping it away from the cushion. And just settle for a bit of distance. Declan will back his potting ability on this. All he's really got to do is drop it in to guarantee the shot on the yellow to the top left. It'll be a bit of a thinner one, but he'll know that he's in a good position to win the frame from that point. Well, in fact, he managed to push it through a little bit further. That's even better. And now he can, he's got a nice angle to pot the yellow in the middle and once again just use the red underneath as a buffer.
Yeah, wanted to make sure he didn't slide off that. He hasn't. Played that lovely. And in fact, if he wanted to, he's perfect on the yellow to top left now. If he wanted to get rid of that, it's just the most guarded ball on the table for him. But completely up to him. He could go for it now. He could go for it after, depending on his preference. So I did to go after. So one good positional shot here. Just needs to avoid the reds. Yeah, that's pretty good. I think he's straight enough on this. Just to be able to push this through a little bit. go. And he's going to be straight in behind the last yellow. And he's giving himself an eight ball for a good push here from Declan. It's important when you get these bits of momentum that you keep it. And he's keeping it at the moment. He really does have the momentum. That's five straight. Match clock largely irrelevant right now. We'll take a couple of slow frames for it to even become a factor. Who can get to 15? Oh, it was big. Oh, it's dry. Nothing's gone. A couple of jaws really were smashed into there, but nothing falling for him. The thing is with, De with Declan, whenever he gets close, he gets agonisingly close. There's always balls rattling. There's, it's balls a, there's no such thing as an overall bad break from him. It's just either close or in. But Chris has got an opportunity here to get back with him one and then have it back on his own terms on his break. Yeah, don't blame him getting this yellow out of the way didn't go to either of the top pockets so while he was behind it may as well get rid of it to the middle taking quite a bit of time on this shot Extension. weighing out his options staring at the one bottom left which looks like the right ball to take as then it opens up the one above it and everything goes so. yeah you can just drop it in and then play the yellow to the right middle but he, he would be drifting away so I think he's probably just thinking about does he get into the sort of middle and be on a choice of a three oh yeah even better if he's on that of course the eight ball's the one as well he's trying to work out which one does he leave to get on the eight ball left an angle here to cannon into the red that's next to the eight just to remove that there you go that's why he spent a few extra seconds working it all out what about that eight ball really nice visit to the table this one good pattern he's picked out making it as easy as he possibly could and the reverse clearance is in, back within one. Chris on the break, trying to level things again. Crunch. Yeah, that's big, isn't it? He's actually been a little bit unlucky. Where that, where the two yellows have sat on the cushion, see this one flying around the table, if he makes any kind of different contact on that, one of them pops out, which makes the finish a bit easier. Didn't quite happen. But what I didn't realise was that the reds were so good. Yeah, you, I was, I was yeah. wondering where you were going with that, if I'm honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at these reds thinking, geez, I'd, I would fancy these. <laughs> Do you think the day's catching up? Sam? Oh, it's been a long weekend for sure. But Yeah, this couldn't have come out any better for him, really. Absolutely. Balls come out and all the balls go. You're happy. Yeah, the old lonely commentator in the booth. 
like the old man in the lighthouse going going mad. <laughs> long a lot of players in that situation play for it in the middle he might still end up taking it in the middle I'm sure he did play for it into the corner more margin of error if you do it that way oh, has he overrun it does it go in the middle oh it's just pulled up to be able to cut but that's a couple of poor shots on the trot mm. yeah, he's just going to use the yellows as the buffer up the top end of the table Still going to win the frame comfortably. Just a trickier eight ball than he would have really wanted, but no problems. Played in 14 frames to 13. Oh, I'll tell you what, it wasn't a good split, was it? Has he made a ball? He hasn't. Yeah, you could tell. Sh I could tell straight away that he didn't make the best contact with that came across it a bit and the yellows are good here yeah it felt a bit dead didn't it when he got the contact there he's got a lovely opener he's got a way to work down the table as well golden opportunity for Declan Brennan to take us all the way it's just all about how he navigates the plant because he's going to want to play it and leave himself on the yellow near the technical black spot if you're talking about a snooker table. That's a poor one. That is a poor one. It's not anything nice here. Very surprised at the way he played it. Don't get why he didn't just dribble that in and use the one to the middle to come down. The more movement you do with that cue ball, the more space there is for things to go wrong. He's looking to see if he can get to the yellow on the left-hand side. If he can, he's fine. I think his thinking was probably to try and get rid of the bottom one first. And then everything from there is clean. So well, can he's always just there. Yeah, he can get to the bottom one. That's, that's fine. The only thing I would say, though is he doesn't want to move the eight ball here. Or if he does, just lightly flick it. There you go. Very nice. Now he needs to be able to screw this white out. Yeah, if, if he stops an extra roll short, he uses the cushion and then it's he's tracking the line. It's not too bad, though. I think that... The line he can get if he just manipulates the pocket slightly can get him up towards the yellow in the middle of the table, which is going to be the one that he's going to want next. Exactly like that. If it goes top left, obviously that helps. You could see, tell the bonus then when he was walking around the table because he was working under the impression that this yellow didn't go top left. And then walking around the table, it just saw, caught his eye, looked down. Oh, I can get there. Always wanted to leave this as his last ball. Yeah, this is. He's recovered the situation well from a, a little bit of an off positional shot midway through. And he's going to take fate and put it into his own hands. This has been impressive from Declan Brennan. It's crunched. He's made a ball and the chance. Oh. is good his break has turned up exactly when he needed it it's good it's not great it's not an absolute road map he's going to have to work for this finish there is some hope for Chris to cling to it is a bit fiddly he may be forced into taking the red into right middle unless he fancies the thin cut along the top cushion but I don't like it because he hasn't got the full pocket with it yeah it's not a big pocket either I don't think has to go 
for the one in the middle. I think with this he might even try and cannon the eight, just nudge it. Well, in fact, he's just gone to make sure of the pot. Red ball's in play. Don't know about that. Yeah, he's thinking, it, well, the natural line doesn't get him anywhere near the eight ball, well, in it, as it turns out, so I think he was just trying to drift down and land on the red in such a way that he can then play on the plant, but he's just left it a touch too thin. He's going to have to, yeah, he's playing the one along the rail, this is the right shot. Great little cannon as well on the red. Just forwards that on a bit as well. And now it is going to be a case of just how he lands on that red that's next to the eight ball. How much room is there? It can be a little bit deceptive. Can he pot it from the sort of line he's on now? Does it need to be further left or does he have to get all the way down the table? Well, he was in that position earlier and he didn't take it, which makes me think he needs to land on it to the right-hand corner, which is obviously a tougher shot. He's a little bit high here, so his next shot is going to be tough no matter which way he goes about it. I think the problem is, I suppose, does the eight ball go left centre? Because if he goes to pot it to bottom left, he's going to have to play around with the yellow with the angle he's going to have to have, and he may not get nicely on the eight ball. I don't think he's, I don't think he's got it to bottom left. There is room, it's just what angles are you going to have on it to be able to get onto the eight ball? It's threading the needle if he wants to come down the, the left-hand side of the table. Yeah, I don't think he's got a choice, though. Well, he's settled for your way. If he can pot this, then he's going to want to try and use the yellow as a buffer. The one towards the bottom right. But the, my my point being, if he hits that yellow, where's he taking the eight ball? I think does he can he get the big pocket with the yellow? It, it it can, but it's not it's not an absolute certainty. That yellow is quite high. He's looking at it now. Can he just pot it direct? That's the. I don't think it goes direct. Yeah, he doesn't. It's tight. He's he's kind of looked at it and grimaced, so that's yeah. going to tell me no. Well, use the yellow. Well, I think he's got to go off the yellow now, hasn't he? I don't think he's got a choice. That yellow's quite high. It's quite high, but if you catch it thick, then you're going to make it. He's looking for other options. A triple. Can yeah. he treble this? Oh, triple for the title. This is not what you wanted, was it? It's close. It's not there. Declan Brennan has had his chance to win the Masters. Chris Melling now has the control. It all came down to that first shot for Declan. Couldn't get on that ball. As it turns out, he probably should have played the ball bottom left, second shot. Because if he gets the cannon on the yellow then, he can then play the big pocket plant and get out from there. He turned it down. Has that cost him the title? Yeah, Chris just came slightly short, slightly too far there, so just had to maneuver the cue ball a bit. That's a lovely shot. Yeah, fabulous. He's done so well there. And this is no missed territory. Can't see him going wrong from here. Just getting the cue ball cleaned, not happy with the contact. can't see it going wrong from here, can you? It's been some match, hasn't it? It's, it's been a brilliant tournament. It's been a brilliant match. 29 frames of drama. Three days of action. Great players. Great pl clearances. Great finals. <laughs> And a great victory. Chris Melling is a champion with Ultimate Pool once again. This time it's the Masters. And he has won in all four years with Ultimate Pool. He's 
been at the top of the game for an awful long time. He is still at the top of the game. Chris Mellings, the champion.